This map from Planet Consulting has actually been floating around for a couple of years now. And other than a few minor alterations moving a couple of those little black dots, there's not a great deal that has changed about it. And I suppose because it has been seen so many times by you know those that are familiar with this, that there are some peculiarities even about this that you don't question because they're talking about the pink bits that are developable and the rest is not. So ultimately you just focus on the pink bits that are developable and you even fail to see that all these bits in the middle and this chunk up here that aren't actually attached to houses or strips along here are also not included in your calculations. And then you, you know, like when I first looked at this map, there are two distinct, two distinctive areas. There's where people can build and it'll be developed and where there's not. So to me, there should only be several legend colors on here representing this is where we intend to build and this is where we are not going to touch it. But there are all these shades of green, which might as well be shades of grey, because when you actually look at it and you ponder what the, the legend over here actually says, you think, but surely they've got that definition incorrect. Maybe not, because maybe what they intend to do is completely strip all the good valuable timbers and sell them off because the plantation timbers aren't any good. But what am I talking about, you wonder? So on in Appendix Q of DA21-0010, the Draft Architectural Design Guidelines, on page 8 you find this little image which confirms the legend on the map that we're looking at. The black dot is the community plot boundary, or the line. The black dot is the dwelling location or intended dwelling location. And the pink bits, the developable area. Indicative only. Yes, well indeed. Now then we've got this lime green, which says open space. And now, forgive me if I'm wrong, but anyone when you think of open space you think of open space you know paddocks ovals um, you know you don't think of bush you think of open spaces so I then thought well do they really in mean open open spaces like do they intend to get rid of all those trees but anyway, so then we've got the other green, which is an environmental linkage. And then we've got the dark green, which is environmental rehabilitation and protection. So just given from that little bit of information, the lime bits are open space. The environmental link linkage, which you would expect being an environmental linkage, and it's not open space, it's got trees and bush, and it's to link environmental rehabilitation, which it is, because there's only one strip of it. I'll show you that in a second. And so the areas that they intend for environmental rehabilitation and protection, that's the dark green. So if you look at their bigger map, all the dark green areas are areas of rehabilitation and plan protection. We know what the pink bits are. We know what the blue bit is. That's where there's a proposed dam inundation and that's a whole different kettle of fish when you're talking about what it would go down onto the Beryl Creek side and the proposed dam and the impact it would have on them. But so we know what those things are. And you just sort of tend to think, well, all these other green bits are just bush that they're going to leave. But 
if that was the case, why would they state that all these lime grits, lime bits, are open space? I even did a Google search to see if it could bring me up any images of an open space that actually looked like bush. And of course it didn't, because we all know open spaces does not mean bush. A paddock is an open space. The bush is not an open space. So it is repeated in more than one occasion that all these line bits, they intend for them to be open spaces. The dark green bits, they intend to be wildlife rehabilitation areas, no-go zones. Well, actually, they do have a few more transition zones. But you see the transition zones? We're not going to touch that area there so it can link that to that. And we're not going to touch that bit there so it can link that to that. And, you know, vice versa. So all these linkages that they've put in, like animals are not going to want to come through their little zone here and get trapped right in the gully with surrounded by you know all these houses and domestication so saying that is a preservation area well it's actually not when it's on the downhill slope not in a very good place for preservation so it's a fairly easy thing when you look at the map look at their legend and say all right well Open spaces are open spaces. They have not revealed what they intend to do with the village. They have not revealed what they want to do with so many things. But what is revealing is that this legend and that other image I just showed you has got open space in there. Now, I'll put it on the map. You can see all those open spaces are not open spaces it's tree bushes it's not open space there's lots of open space down here and there's some open space in the areas here and here and here but all these lime green spots through here that they've got marked they are treed areas they are not open spaces. By the very definition of open spaces, there would be the intent that there would be no trees there and it will be open space. Now imagine how much money they could make out of getting rid of all these natural timbers over here that haven't even been touched. Some of them might actually be in demand. Now, if you want to do a search, a Google search, any kind of search and see what you can come up with for open spaces and see if it will ever give you a definition of thick, dense bush. It will bring you pictures of ovals and all these other things because they're open spaces, the wide open spaces, you know, they're not wide open spaces when they're covered with trees. So the question needs asking. Do they intend to strip all the trees through here and only leave these dark green bits as they say these will be protected and these lime green ones will be open spaces? They could make a lot out of selling the timbers through here because they can't make much out of selling them from over here, can they? And besides that, these timbers all down through here are still under lease to the Forestry Commission till 2033. So, you know, don't know what's happening in 2033, whether anyone outside of a government department could actually get those leases on it, I don't know. Okay, I hope you can see that. This is their legend on their map. So, going by what we just looked at, and by their definition, the only area that is going to be protected slash rehabilitated 
is 541 hectares. There is going to be 96 hectares in linkages between those environmental areas. Those lime green open spaces, 240 hectares. Now, as I said, in no definition can you actually say that those open, that open space, those 240 hectares, represents bush. An open space is not bush. It might be grasslands, it might be a grazing paddock, but it is not heavily treed bush. These are not open spaces. So what do they intend to do around the developable areas and then come in and what, clear more? But by their own definition, 541 plus 96 does not even make half the hectares of the development that will actually be preserved and rehabilitated, protected. So that is a very, very big reduction in flora and fauna. So what do they mean by open spaces? They have not given anywhere near enough indication of what they want to do now and pr telling us in the future what they want to achieve. They, how do they explain 240 hectares of open space where there's now bush? Do you intend to turn that bush into open space? Do you intend to chop down those trees too? Because I can only interpret open space as having no trees in it. How about you? Can you come up with a definition of open space that is thick bush with big trees in it on hilltops? No. You know, you, you think of Julie Andrews on the, you know, in The Sound of Music on the top of the hills where she's in the open spaces and she's got her arms wide out because there's so much wide open space. You know, she's not talking about hiding in the trees and, well, they did that later on though, didn't they? But anyway, so what is the, what do they mean when they are saying open space? Why would you even need to distinguish open space from anything else? Because, as I said before, that there's the areas where the houses are going, there's the area where they want to put in the village. The rest should be left. That's what they're saying. Oh, except for the community areas, which I tell you what, this is a really half-hearted effort at trying to make it a rural land sharing community when all they're sharing are these yellow areas where, you know, it's like having a community hall that some you, you might meet up and do something every now and again. These are um, not communal um, communities. There's no shared, nothing shared in there. And for all the talk about all the orchards and the food crops and surviving on what you eat, this was actually said by Mark McMurtry, yeah, they're going to survive on what they eat. Well, you should be dead and buried then by now because what have you done with the land? You haven't even removed the rubbish. I dare say you wouldn't have even got soil tests done to see if, you know, you've destroyed microorganisms with all the pesticide use and it needs building back again. You know, maybe stick some of those worms that you're sticking on all the, you know, all those cannabis plants up there that Dolph runs in out, he goes running out with his gun. Don't you dare come near me. Seriously, boy. Did you know that it is actually legal for someone to walk up to anyone's front door to knock on it? And you've got no right to be coming to anybody with a gun in your hand. Especially you, Dolph. 
Yes, that's also another risk you may face moving into this community. If you take a wrong turn and you wind up at the wrong place, someone might come out with a gun in your face. If you don't answer right, well, who knows what extension of tribal law that they think they can get away with on this land when they're setting up their own little kingdom and their own set of rules that they don't have to follow the matrix rules. Even though they say they have to tick all the boxes, they don't tick all the boxes. They went ahead and did illegal works before Christmas. They don't care whether they've got permission to do stuff. They'll do it and face the consequences afterwards. But, you know, oh, well, too bad. We've, we've bulldozed down all the trees now and we might get a fine for it. Doesn't matter. We still got to do what we wanted to. And, yeah, you can't put the trees and the bushes back once they've bulldozed it all away, can you? Now, there's certainly been a lot going on with Dolph Cook, the Australian Cannabis University, and um, Cannabis Industries, <coughs> excuse me, Australia Proprietary Limited. But that is a subject for another video. There are other things to focus on at the moment, especially with submissions closing in a few weeks on this development application. It is anticipated, however, that the Nor Northern Regional Planning Panel cannot actually rule be the authorising authority on this, simply for the fact that the cost estimates are incorrect and once they're made to amend them, they will go back to the Tweed Shire Council. Then I would anticipate that the Tweed Shire Council will then have to not run another public 28-day comment window. So this may not be the first chance you get, but it also may be, because the Northern Regional Planning Panel may actually take everything that's put towards them and be so overwhelmed by the amount of evidence against it that they can quite easily make a decision that supports all the objections and not even need a public comment. They just say, no, nope, we're not going to, um, we're not going to accept this. It's refused, rejected in its entirety. And if you want to resubmit it again and start through the whole process again, you're quite welcome to. But uh, they would be told in no uncertain terms that in its current condition, it would not be accepted by the Tweed Shire Council either. So I would like to know what their intent is for these ones in lime green where they classify them as open spaces where there's lots of trees already the only parts that are already cleared are a few bits here here there's a bit over here there's some over here down through here but all these rest, all the rest is treed and not open spaces. Is it their intent to turn that all into open spaces around the house? I mean, we know that it's not logical because if you're moving to the country, well, seriously, if you move to this, you wouldn't really be that smart anyway, but if you did move here and you're going, oh, I'm going to be surrounded by trees and nature. Well, you've got to clear an acre, which leaves you with, what, 1.47 acres left. So you might have 1.47 acres of trees. And then what? Everything else around you is open space. To me, open space says cleared. Is there any other way to define it? Because if someone else can define open space as um, <laughs> bush, bush and trees and all of that. I mean, please. I mean, I'm not Mark McMurtry or Adrian Brennock. I can't 
take what's logical, contort it and twist it, and sometimes you just cannot understand the delusions of some people. Because if it is their intent that those lime green spots actually be open spaces as stated, that means there will be no trees there. And there will be a little over 600 hectares between these preservation, well, these bits that join the dark green bits, over just over 600 hectares that will not be devastated. Out of 1,584 hectares, that's nearly a thousand hectares. That's just too much, too much destruction. And considering that they are doing this not because they want to provide a, a lovely, great space where people can come together in community, this is all about money. And they can't get money out of these trees it's been it's been known for some time that the trees the they were never thinned they're not actually commercially viable and they're not worth anything however natural bushes are and so yeah we'll just plan to take all these trees that's all right we've got this little wildlife corridor plan down here where they can still use it and they can still boundary and you know there's they're into the national parks there but this whole area here no nah. it actually looks like they intend to cut down all those trees like uh, they can correct me if i'm wrong but uh open spaces is open spaces well, i don't know of any open spaces that have got Lots and lots of trees in them. Mm, that's one of those ones for what the... <laughs> anyway, I'll leave that with you. I'll catch you next time. Bye.